didn't quite hear what you said, and I'm probably relieved about that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you about, this is related to what we've been talking about. I've been talking about this experiment we ran um, some years ago now. It uh, continues to be influential, which is somewhat ironic, I suppose. But, uh, you know, so it's about fame and success, why things take off. Uh, so it's called Music Lab. Matt Soganik was the grad student uh, who, who led this. It was his, I don't think it was in all of his PhD, but it was a you know, major part of his PhD. He's now at Princeton and actually working at Microsoft Research. Uh, okay, so, <coughs> and was done with, and Duncan Watts as well, right? So this is, this is when we were at Columbia. So, uh, so the idea, so, so Matt got 48 songs from this kind of very kind of no name uh, MP3 site. It wasn't particularly you know famous or anything. Probably doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so he, but he just simply actually randomly chose uh, artists to write to, and these are garage, like true garage band or living room band kind of people, right? They record it, they throw it up, and we'll see what happens. Um, so he wrote wrote to a whole bunch of people. There was one that was serious enough to have a lawyer write back, which was kind of interesting. Um, but uh, and. 48 of them, we got 48 that would, or we chose 48 to say, uh, to, who said they would say yes, uh, and created a, a kind of a little online um, music download site. It's an experiment, people know it's an experiment. Various kinds of people came to this experiment. The first lot was all from um, a teenage uh, website. Actually, it was advertised there for free. Uh, and then we had people, we invited people from the small world experiment, because we had about 100,000 email addresses there. Okay, so we had 30,000 people more or less in this whole thing. Um, and okay, the question is how probable is the world, right? So if we run the thing again, do we get the same results? And this is something often debated, you know, talked about in history and so on. And there are uh, Doctor Who, for example, there are points you can't change in time, which is a ludicrous, um, <laughs> ludicrous story. But uh, they are, they're not so good with the physics. Um, <coughs> right. But Right, and can we, can we at times like try to estimate that volatility? Right, where are we in some sort of bottleneck in, in history where things will, you know, kind of go in some well predicted way, or is it really open? You know, is it really crazy? You know? um, okay, uh, and the, what we're going to look at is you know wh which ones of these songs take off? Do they take off in, in different ways? Um, and do we get superstars and so on? Of course, it's not going to run for long enough to do that, but it's going to touch on that idea. Right. All right, so you can't read this, but this is what it looked like. This is the presentation. It was, a better, it was definitely a better website than the Small World one, which was pretty awful to look at, but um, <coughs> it was a nice looking thing. Okay, so there's this layout like this. Uh, it's random. So that just this is an initial experiment. It's random for you. So you come in, you, you log in, you answer some questions. We sort of check to see if you've been there before. Uh, various other pieces. Um, and there's a number of downloads written here. And th that's what this entry is. So that's how many people have come before, how many times this song has been downloaded. So what you could do is click on this, a little player came up, listen to it. You could rate it, which we didn't really use that information in, the, in this paper. Um, uh, but, and then you could download it. So that action was the thing that we took as a, a sign of, as a vote, that you liked it. It was free, keep it. All right, I guess this wouldn't work anymore. Uh, so there were eight, so what people didn't know is that there were, uh, everyone got a random presentation, which was fixed for you. Uh, also after two hours, <laughs> anything you did after that was, was ignored. So that was just another feature. But there were eight parallel worlds like this, okay? Uh, so if you saw the downloads that you saw in your world were for, for people just in your world, right? And then there were eight of those. And then there was one other world where we put about 10% of people into, so you're randomly assigned to worlds as you come along. Uh, we put about 10% of people into this last world where it was independent, right? So you couldn't, there were no downloads. You couldn't see the numbers of downloads. You were just, you were just there. You didn't see, there was no social signal whatsoever from anyone else. Okay. Um, and so, so fair enough. Okay, so the layout was this, so it's three by 16. So that fitted nicely on one page, which was useful. Uh, then we shifted in the three more versions of the experiment to a straight list like this. Classic thing, right? So this is ordered by number of downloads. So top 10 kind of thing, or top 48 in our case. Uh, so one thing we noticed is that people, of course, will click on the top song. They 
have to, which was the point of this. Here, the, because it's random, the top song, you, know, you had to really search for it. Second, third, it becomes harder to see. Fair enough. Um, here it's given to you, and it's dynamic because it's changing to depending on what's happening in the experiment before you. People have also clicked on the last one because they want to, you know, it's a natural thing to do. Like, what is this? What's the range? So that, there, was a, there was a little more clicking for the last one, which was kind of a nice human thing to do. Like, how bad is the, how bad is the bottom one? What's that? <laughs> right. Just, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe. It's just so, so you, because there's, there's clearly a range for you. Yeah. So this clear, this is how it's laid out. Let's see what is going on in this thing. What is this like? <laughs> now, from a personal point of view, the last the, the songs that weren't didn't do well typically were pretty bad. But you know that's a personal thing, right? So that's what we're we're not okay. So how do you judge that? That's that's sort of the problem. But I sort of broadly okay to say that. Um, what was the? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, I'll show you how they did. All right. So this is uh, rank and and. Um, for experiment one and two, right? So, so this is the rank of the song, is one beat being the best down to 48 in the independent world, right? So this is the first song down to 48. We just have that one thing. And so for every one of these points, there are eight little circles here, and each one is the rank of that song in each one of these interdependent worlds, okay? So you see the, very, the song that did best in the independent world, in this case, it's, it didn't really go out of the top five. So it was... You know, we couldn't, I mean, you could try to somehow control it. You'd have to do some other kind of um, processing with people early on with their judgments to get some distribution of quality as, you know, <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain. Because I don't want to talk about inherent quality. There really isn't such, there is a little bit, but there isn't such a, quite a thing, right? It's based on the population that's viewing it, which could be, you know, you change in people who are, maybe older or from a different culture or whatever it is, and you'll get a different ordering, you know, on top of the randomness that, that is just inherent to this system. So, so what I'm trying to say is, you know, we took 48 songs and there's some, there's some variation. So here's the worst song. That's usually being found out. So if you see this down here, the 48th song in the interdependent world, never really, it never came first. But... Inside, there's a huge range of variation. There's a song that came first in one and 40th in another. I mean, that's pretty bad, right? That's a huge... So if it was all perfect and we're all good at sorting out, sorting out quality, the Rosen uh, story I told you the other day, be all on this line, right? One will go to one, two will go to two. Yeah. But that is a huge bubbling, okay? You don't see any previous downloads. Okay, so, oh, so for each one, for each one of these, there are eight worlds plus eight interdependent worlds where you're seeing what other people have done before you, and one independent one, and there's eight of those over here again, and one in independent one, which gives us a way of you know, constructing the well, not a measure of quality, but you know, what this population left to their own devices would think of these songs. And then what happens if they're following each other? Just this little bit. You don't know if they're the same as you, the other people. You have no idea. You just say download them. So it's a thing to add here is it's a very weak social signal. Right. Uh, it's hard to tell from here, and I'll show you some plots that uh, kind of deal with this, uh, that it looks somewhat similar, but there's, again, this huge scatter, right? Massive scatter. Uh, the very best song, again, doing pretty well here, and the worst one is you know, struggling. But it did bubble up to, I think that's 36th here, which is pretty spectacular for one that's universally reviled. Um, but uh, you've got songs that were you know, in the 40s. Here it's you know, 13th or 14th. I mean, this is pretty, pretty nuts. Um, <coughs> we like to think we're good at sorting things out. This is the number of downloads, so it's a similar kind of... It's, it's the same. This plot gets turned in the previous ones when you go to ranks. Um, so this is the number of downloads, or the fraction of the market share, if you like, the fraction of downloads that a song ended up with, and then the, in the independent world, and then in the eight interdependent worlds. So this is the winning, you know, the best song, right? So it, you can see here the first two, three songs, you know, did well in the independent one, and then it's a little more tight in here. 
uh, and these tended to map, tended to do well, but you know, this is below, this one here is below a lot of these points here, and so on. Um, you can see there's a little more of this runaway success. I mean, we can't run this thing forever. It's not enormous. You know, we don't have 10,000 songs. We can't get quite that superstar story out. Um, and again, it's a weak signal, but you can see they did better, right? The best song does better when people are following each other, which should make sense, but there's an extra piece to this. Okay, so you measure a couple of things. One is a Gini coefficient, which we can go into, but it's a um, measure of inequality, right? So when it's one, uh, it's, um, it's unequal in the sense that that would be the case where one song has all of the, the downloads and the rest have zero. That would be, right? And if everyone has the same number, right? No one is special, everyone has the same number, then we have um, zero, Gini coefficient would be zero. Right? So you can see what's this, this piece. There are various ways to calculate this thing. But this is the market share here, okay. All right, <coughs> so, the G so there's a measure of inequality, the higher, uh, the more unequal. So this is the ex first experiment with a random layout. So these guys are, are more all more unequal than the than the uh, independent world, right? So there's inequality in the independent world, fair enough. But the ones where people start to follow each other a little bit, the inequality goes up. Okay, so this is a suggestion of that, and then the inequality is worse when that following is much um, easier to do. This is the again, this is where the thing is laid out linearly in front of you. It's easier to see what other people have done, so that inequality goes up across the board, right? And it's, this, you know, this is just a, a function of the people coming in. <coughs> um, okay. Uh, so a second thing is unpredictability. So this is talking about, you've got some ordering of the songs in one world and an ordering in another world. How well do those orderings match up, regardless of their market share, actually? Um, <coughs> okay, it's a messy thing. Uh, but this is to say that if you, if you compare uh, all of these um, worlds with each other, so you've got uh, eight choose two worlds to compare with each other, then you get this kind of degree of uh, disorder between them. You can measure this in different ways. Uh, but it's much, with the, with the independent one, you can just do things, you can do things like break it in half, right? Because it's independent, and then create two artificial independent worlds and compare how well they did. Or, you know, take the first half a second, you do all sorts of things with that. Uh, so the, there's some unpredictability in that sense as well uh, for the independent kind of uh, estimations, but it's much worse, it, well, worse. It's stronger here uh, when, when people are following each other, and they're much stronger when people are following each other in a clearer way. Right? So we turn up the social signal, the disorder between worlds goes up. So I have a summary, I guess, of this, but I can get ahead of myself. Right, so, okay, so... The, there are a number of things that make sense, and then it sort of goes out, and we have to understand the last part. So we have a we increase the social signal by making the, you know, going from a layout like this to a list layout. It's easier to see what other people have done. So you get greater following and greater inequality. So that makes sense. That seems fair enough, right? Uh, this is this is somewhat peculiar. You might because you've got this greater inequality, but actually there's more unpredictability. Well, you might think it's easy to go from get it, get to this point and think, well, I guess all right, it's more unequal, but you know the good guys are still winning. But actually, it's more jumbled. It's actually more jumbled because, well, initial the initial things that happen matter more now, right? Who who gets out in front early on, that has a you know, it's a rich gets richer thing. They have a better chance of of you know then succeeding later on, right? So a little bit of fickleness at the start, and certainly to start with, it's just a bear. Right, there are no downloads. The thing is just laid out randomly. People start to mess around with it. Maybe they download it, right? So they, I mean, you can imagine if you then have 10,000 songs or whatever it is, 10,000 cultural artifacts or 100 you know, million of them, much harder thing to sort through, right? So the difficulty of sorting things out at the start, coupled with this following thing or this rich gets richer, leads to un unpredictability. But that's not, not the thing you immediately go for. Um, <coughs> And then this is a story thing, I suppose. Uh, so you've got these much more unequal distributions than this sort of thing, right? So here's Harry Potter out here on Mona Lisa. Then we start to tell stories, right? I mean, this thing is 10 times as good as the second one. A billion people can't be wrong. 
right? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. There has, it has to be out there for good reasons, right? So that's the, it suggests that, you know, there really is underlying quali uh, you know, a quality that's varying strongly. And we're just, you know, it's being mapped to what people are choosing to do. But it actually could be that people have very much, that people are following each other. Much more that this is the mechanism. I mean, you know, after the fact, you can say, oh, you know, this is obvious and so on. But <laughs> um, so lots more social construction. Yes. Oh, to, to help you search for it. Yeah, no, it, well, that, that is true. And it's, 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 yes, and the same with Amazon, for example. Well, so you mean, so you do your search and you get this thing laid out, and like which is reflective of what other people have wanted. Right. Like, if I want the yeah. best result, I just want it to give me the best result. I want to mm -hmm. know. Well, they do do that. They, t they, they look at that, sure. The third one was the best one. Because they look at that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No one goes to the second page, basically. That's pretty, you're, you're, it's a disaster if you have to look at the second page. There are 100,000 hits or whatever, or 20 billion, and you, you do not look at the second page because you know it's bad. Um, I, maybe I don't understand quite what you're saying, but I think it's the... Yeah. I'd actually rather that the, the, your first study, where things were randomized a bit, yeah. actually better mapped the independent ranking because people were not following and controlling yeah. as strongly. But it's unavoidable. Well, no, so, but so that's a good thing mapping yeah. what people actually thought was mm -hmm. best without... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, 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 fair enough. No, 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 no. Absolutely. And, and so, so you'll see it all, like small scales, maybe I mentioned this... Um, one thing that people like to do in that they have meetings or retreats and there's voting about things and you get stickers or something like this and there might be a, a, you know put on a big piece of paper the number of you know we're going to choose we're going to choose from these four things so put your you've got five stickers you know maybe there are 30 things and you're given five stickers and you're allowed to you know put all five in one one box if you really want that one or you're allowed to distribute them and that seems like a really nice idea but of course it, again it suffers from this initial conditions thing, right the first people up there you know put some things, and that starts to, you, it's, not a, it's, it's not an independent vote, right? And it's the same with having um, pri or secret ballots. I mean, secret ballots are just really essential in, in getting, you know, you'll have we, have, we have, we have faculty meetings where we've had to try and stop it, because you have to vote by raising your hand. And you're like, hmm, you know, I mean, it's really, it's really wrong. You can't do that. If it's, if it's about something that really matters and not everyone's in obvious agreement, that's, that's just a very fraught thing to do. So that's you know, when it's all local and so on. But yeah, I mean, in terms of getting people to express their true opinion, you, know, you have to set up a structure so that they're not following or being coerced or whatever it is. Um, you know, this all seems fine. You know, it seems like, let's just vote. But it's, it's, really, it's really tough on people. Um, it's something like Amazon, you're just being, it's being reinforced all the time. Right, so other people bought this thing, so you said, oh, okay, I'll buy that as well, whatever, you know, this happened. So that just, uh, rich gets richer stuff is being built in all the time. You don't, I mean, that's kind of obvious there, but it's happening all the time in little ways, in everything that gets presented to you, you know, words people use, right? There's some sort of voting thing that's happening and it's hard to, hard to avoid it. Mm. Social gravity? Social gravity, yeah. Yeah, well, you're falling into something for sure. Yeah, and it's a black hole, I guess, when it goes really wrong. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I will say that years ago when we, we did the small world stuff, we had this idea that it would be great to have a search, a search algorithm that also presented you with whatever it was, opposing views or things that are really opposite to what you search for to stop that. So you, uh, the filter bubble, I think, has been a framing of this recently. Is that what it's called? So I think that was a TED talk. Um, right, that you know, everything's being filtered for you, so you don't really get that free choice anymore because, you know, 
And it is hard. You can't sort everything out. So it, and people, you know, generally, you get some things that are serviceable, for sure. But you can see that stuff gets lost. You know, it may be equally as good. And especially if it's a world where just the one thing wins, it's not so good. Um, <coughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you do this well. But something, you, you search for things, or you're kind of looking around, and something that bumps you and shows, if you want, you know, like gives you a, these are opposing views. There, there have been some efforts to do that, but nothing that's great. Because, you know, there's, here's the thing you're looking for, and there's everything else. You know, what's opposing it? There's stuff that's just different, which is vast. Okay. Yeah? Stop talking. Okay. So, um, following, so it's a story thing. Uh, you know, I do have this other sequence of slides. Maybe I'll just race through them that kind of summarizes all of these things. Uh, okay, so there was a, a final experiment. Um, the paper was published by Matt a few years later um, <coughs> and Duncan, but we, we set this up. It's this around the time I was leaving. So we set this up. Uh, so this is the, the third experiment had no great results, so it was just to run in parallel the second experiment type thing again, right? So now we have, uh, let's say, I, I guess there were, you know, just, it was just running along there, just a few worlds, not so many. Um, and uh, so it's the, it's the as I said, it's the uh, linear layout, right? So it's the stronger signal story. So that's running. So then we took one of those, one of those worlds, and replicated it, so now it's got two copies of it. And in those two copies, oh, yeah, we turned we turned the um, ordering upside down. So we did a bad thing, right? It's very naughty. So there's about this is in terms of this is the number of people who have come in. So here it's seven about 750. It's just when we pushed the button and did this flip. So now we let the original, so we let the original experiment just keep running. We replicate it. And we turn the uh, rankings upside down, right? So now the worst song is the best, and the best song is the worst. So we know it's not going to sort itself out because we know that just you know starting from zero, things are kind of messy. But the question was, you know, could it somehow resurrect itself a little bit? Uh, so this goes to Paola, right? So here's song 48. It's number of downloads here as a function of the number of people who come in. Song one. So song 48 is just a terrible, right? Just a disaster. Okay, so now it's number one. Well, first of all, here's what song one did in the original experiment when we just let it keep going. And here's what song 48 did, right? So they kept following this pretty linear kind of path here. Um, <coughs> but we flipped this up, and song 48 is now, now starts to take off, right? It's at the top of the list, and people are like, mm. and they start to download it. But not at that rate, not at the rate that the this song that was deemed to be first or surface to number one in that first experiment uh, did. Uh, song one, actually, and we, you saw that spread of the qualities of these things, the independently judged qualities, um, <coughs> is actually starting to dig itself out. Right? People found that one and listened to it, and they managed to get out. And so each dash line is its own separate experiment. Um, <coughs> this is song 47. So it's similarly doing well after being, this is where it would have been, or would have been or was, you know, for this one other experiment, that's where it was going. It's not getting a much bigger rate, to be honest, but it's, it's increasing. Song two, right, it's been kicked down here. This is where it would have, go this is where it did go for the one experiment we left running. Uh, and here it is, it's doing okay, but it's not, get, it's not gonna get sorted out. We don't expect to, to get that same list back, but we expect to get something a bit, we might hope to get something a bit better back. But if you, so this is, if you manipulate the system early on, very different outcomes. And it should be clear from this that song two is not getting the downloads, right? If you think of this as dollars or whatever it is, it's not bringing in the bucks anymore. Song 47 is doing better for itself. Song 48 is certainly doing better for itself. But the overall performance of this system, not so good, right? So the whole thing, so you may be in charge of song 48, right? And that's, this is your thing. You somehow put it at the front of the queue. So you're thrilled because it's getting, you know, you're making money, but it's a classic kind of thing where there's a sort of a disaster for the whole system, right? So this is, this is um, <coughs> the pretend rich gets richer, but at a slower rate, and I don't have this. So it's, a, it's payola, right? So you pay to get your songs on the radio. I mean, just to use, I mean, of course, it works in lots of other fields, but quite literally there, were, there <laughs> has been this uh, 
effort to do that. And it's called Paola. And you get your song on the radio, and everyone downloads it and whatever listens to it and so on. And thinks it's kind of OK, because everyone else is listening to it. But that was all made up. But the whole system doesn't work as well. That's the thing. It works for you, but the whole system is being hurt. Yeah. So it is in your interest to game it. I mean, there's a lot of paradox. Like it's in your interest to game it, but not collectively, things go down. Yeah. <laughs> Fever, I don't know. Ooh, yeah. Um, Shades of Grey, right, is actually fan fiction for that. That's where it comes from which is amazing to me. No, that's what it was. It was fan fiction because I just didn't think there was enough whatever in it. And so, they, so this person writes a, you know, this thing, and then that becomes its own thing. Movies too now, right? <laughs> humans, humans. <laughs> also incriminatingly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Sorry, there was a, there, okay, yes. You, Oh, they trick you with a thing? That, ha that happens still a lot on things like YouTube, right? The video will be... Like, there's a video that's taking off, and then everyone else calls the video that. And it's got some... They want you to... They're trying to s yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really dubious. Yeah. And you hate them. So you hate them, right? They're trying to get themselves into this category, and you know maybe they get a few, you know, they get some reward for it because they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, but then there's the voting system. You see the voting they they go down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like it's like spam, right? I mean, spam must work a little bit because one in a billion people click on the thing, <laughs> and it's that one person that's killing everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I will buy these things. Thank you for sending them to me. Uh, anyway. Your, yeah. Oh, that's been done. Yeah, th those experiments have been done, actually. Yeah, I can't, I'm trying to remember some of them off, offhand, but yeah, people have been. Yeah, lying about the wattage that's on the bike in front of you, that, you know, on your watt meter. I mean, people set their clocks a little. I mean, they do various little tricks to kind of, you know. Actually, forget that, right? <laughs> oh, I see. I don't know about this game. Should I learn this game? What is it? Candy what? Yeah. Even pace setters, pace setters, yeah. yeah. Well, that was the story with Bannister. Bannister had pace setters. Right, right. And then Landy, and when Landy didn't, he was the first to do it. But all these people broke the four-minute mile straight away, you know. What? The four-minute mile, this is Bannister, right? Breaking the four-minute mile, right? And then suddenly, <laughs> it's 343 is the record now, I think. But they, and then they, um, yeah, then all these other people are like, oh, I can do that. I mean, it was something that was sitting around for a while. It was actually, a we were looking at this the other day. The way records descend is kind of yeah. funny. But yeah, um, also I think, I think maybe, Bannister, that was also in the era where training more than twice a week was cheating, I think. Right? You know, this? I mean, he was, a, he was a doctor. He had a real job. He, Seriously? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it used to be a lot of sports were like that. You train on Tuesday and Thursday and play the sport on a Saturday, and that's it, you know? But... No, they're not professionals, no, right? And then, but there was also an idea that training more than that was actually cheating. <laughs> that was sort of, you know, not really the done thing, sort of thing, you know. Yeah, but it's yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, the 1970s were fun. <laughs>
I mean, there's still some spectacular, obviously spectacular drugs involved now, but um, yeah, there was some pretty interesting, interestingly shaped humans in the 1970s, coming out of Eastern Europe, right, in particular, but <laughs> kind, of, kind of everywhere. It's like, yeah, sure. I mean, look at baseball, yeah, right? I mean, I, I guess what we're trying, we're getting there is that arms race, that's off track of it, but it's the arms race problem, right? I mean, right. if it's just a simple game thing, you have to run from here to here. How do you get better? You know, after you figure out that training seven days a week helps, right? Because that's the first. That there's a big transition. Let's train some more. Let's do strength training. So you do all those things. You eat all your wheat bix or whatever it is, and then, you know, here's some funny juice. Drink some funny juice. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the different. You could have a different Olympics for that one, yeah. right? Okay, so that's so that's an interesting point. So it turns so there are two things there. One is it costs a lot to do drugs well, not that I've checked, but it does take it does cost a lot. So the more money you pay, the better situation you have. I mean Armstrong has become the big example. And different people respond differently to these things. So that's the second piece. Some people get a huge bump, and then some people are monsters who don't actually get much better. So that's why it's not Okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe eventually we'll just say, you know, running 100 meters is kind of cool, but it's pretty silly. You know? It's, I mean, it, it, drugs, it, drugs or whatever, right? I mean, you can't get much, much, much better. Maybe a little, but not a lot better. Well, we've already had that debate a little bit. Um, I do have this set of slides to, that I can... I don't know if I even put this on the web. I'm just going to flick through this, but it's a summary of things that have just occurred, basically, right? So, quickly, right? So, we talked about this. Like, why? You know, here's the, here's the paradox. It's very famous. Um, right, these guys can't predict anything. I think she went to 12 or 13 editors, right? Before one of them said, okay, this is pretty good. Uh, and apparently the story was the uh, person in charge, what's the press? Harry Potter. Small, here it's Scholastic, right? It was, what's the, what is the UK one? Bloomsbury, yeah. Because his granddaughter liked the book a little bit. You know, it was, it was a mess. Um, I will tell you, I read this on a plane. I read this on a plane to Australia once, and my wife had given it to me, exactly that kind, right? And I remember, I finished, I said, you know, it's pretty good, but it, like, I'm not sure why this is the, I mean, it was, this is 1998 or something, you know, this, I'm not sure why this is, I mean, it's got all these elements that so many other things have. I mean, it really was, I mean, you know, it's not just na 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 na. I mean, it is actually a book with words in it that, that you know, it's a story, right? <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, it's, um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about this one. So, and then here's the here's the the framing, right? So we understand bushfires. This is Australia, which is uh, usually on fire or underwater, or sometimes the same thing. Uh, and you're if both. It's not, then there's poison. Are they attacking it? Yeah. Well, they're gonna. They're they're actually snakes coming out of here. They're <laughs> 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 so coming to they share they share you know your ecological situation. What's that? <laughs> well, actually, yeah, you wear boots and you're pretty good. But actually, most snakes, most snakes that, yeah, all the snakes I saw as a kid, poisonous. Yeah. Your average snake is deadly poisonous. It's terrifying. What's that? No, no, the cane toads are kind of nasty. You don't lick the cane toads. Don't lick them, people. <laughs> um, some spiders are bad, but, but it's really the snakes. Snakes are spectacularly bad. Um, all right, so we so the, it's a system system problem is what I've been trying to say over and over in various ways about why things spread, why they take off. Um, you know, we know a spark starts the fire, but we we get excited about the spark, and then we make two uh, two mistakes when we think about social wildfires, what I call social wildfires. Um, and then it's sitting right here, actually, right. So the tipping point, yes, yes, everyone is excited about Malcolm Gladwell with the beautiful stories. 
This is a classic example. Let's let's have an anecdote. This is a, I mean, this is true in so many areas where we tell stories, right? You tell a story and then generalize, and tell a story and then generalize, right? It happens in religion. It happens in on NPR. It happens, um, you know, in political spheres. Like here is you know, Mary Jane. Da, 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 tra, 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 tra. That is why you know the, the other side must be you know wiped from the earth, right? Because of this little story, you know. Anecdotes, right? It's a problem. Okay, but the, here it is. Here's the focus, right? It's the it's the match. The match is the reason that this thing burned, not because it was incredibly hot and the fire, you know, the, <laughs> the trees were connected to each other, which was kind of a big deal actually. We saw that one. Oh yeah, this is good. So um, we're storytelling machines, right? So Homo narrativus is the framing that I've, I put for this. Um, so all sports commentary are kind of like this, although. <laughs> You, you will see, there are good commentators who will say, this could be the pivotal moment. Like, this could be, you know, like it might not be. It depends how things pan out, right? And it's true. Someone hits a home run in the third game of the World Series, and, you know, maybe it's the changing point. But if they lose, then it wasn't. You know, it's kind of weird as to how you, yeah. So some people are cognizant of that, right? And they, they're, they're aware of it. Okay, so that's true. Um, there's a little, the rollover is all financial um, analysis and um, more explicitly Dungeons and Dragons. Right. This is absolutely true. <laughs> I, so I, I've been reading um, Lord of the Rings to one of my people. And, uh, it, you know, it's, it's interesting. The, the Hobbit's a mess, but the Lord of, Lord of the Rings is pretty good. But there's definitely the, the scene in The Hobbit, which was rewritten for Lord of the Rings, right? The, when uh, Bilbo um, comes across Gollum. That was rewritten. In light, you know, to fit the, the story that came later, but <laughs> so, but basically, it's um, you know, the D and D version would be, Bilbo says, "I searched the area, right?" And the you know, the, what I would call the reality master rolls a million-sided die, <laughs> and says, "It comes up and it's a, you know," and the answer is, "Oh, you find the one true ring." <laughs> 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 Carry on, right? You know, it's absolutely. And then a friend of mine was saying, "Well, how big would that die be?" So actually, I estimate it. So if you have every, every side was a centimeter, roughly, and there's circles tessellating the thing, roughly. So it's only about five meters, which is in, in diameter, which isn't that bad. Hi. OK, I think. Um, yeah, five meters, that's, that's kind of plausible. Well, like, would you know which, Marine side, which of side of the face was actually like up at that point? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you'd have a big um, room that you could throw it around it and kick it. And you look like down. Once you get to the top, like you're all kind of like. You, 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 yeah, you, you guys can sort this out. You can sort this out. Very well made, so one million sided die. Small difference is an angle. There's a, there's a great. I don't know if you, any of you have read Terry Pratchett, but there's one in one of his books, there's a beautiful scene where, or a number of. A scene that plays out of a um, part of the book where they try to make the odds one in a million because then they know they'll succeed. <laughs> so one in 10,000 is not enough, one in 100,000, I think I have it in some slides later, but one in 100,000, that's not enough. Yeah, you're right. That's right, he has to blindfold him and stand, stand on one leg. Yeah, now it's, never, now it's one in a million. And now, they're sh now, now they will definitely succeed. It was almost one in a million. That's why it failed? And then they fell, and the chances of somebody bringing a pool underneath them right at that time was one in a million. So the story worked. Yeah, so he talks about narrativium, right? Which is the, the, there are f six elements in the world, right? Earth, water, air, and fire. Element of surprise, which is a joke. And then narrativium, which is the stuff that's in stories. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you can't have, yeah. Yeah, if it's one against 10,000, <laughs> one in a million, for sure it works. <laughs> it's great. Because, you know, we, it's a bias, right? They're the stories we, we like to write about. But most stories are pretty boring. Got up, went to work, came home. Nothing really much happened, you know. <laughs> they say you're going to tell that story, but I don't know what's going on. But you. It was this thing. It was a little six-week-old golden retriever. <laughs> oh my God! All right. Here's another two reason we're all individuals, right? This is you may recognize this scene. Um, so we think that, but of course we're not really. We follow each other. So yeah, but we, but because we're individuals, we tell stories as individuals, and we, it's harder for us to understand group behavior. We can't really. We don't have metaphors for it very well. 
metaphors that we predominantly use are of individuals. You know, we think of the thing as having a, a head and some limbs and all sorts of stuff, right? Uh, we're spectacular imitators. Oh my God. Right, so that's been, that never used to be blocked, but now it is. I'm going to show you this a little bit. That's so disappointing. I guess it doesn't know where this is in the world. Oh, no. Is that the yoga tablet? Yeah. Is, it, is that what it is? <coughs> Can I get this to work? I'm going to give up. History, yeah. What bird has what bird elaborate has most complex elaborate beautiful songs complex? I guess there's lots of contenders. I guess there are lots of contenders. But this was what bird one I bird has some first elaborate. You know it's playing in another place. Sorry of this. Yeah. Right. He clears a space in the forest to serve as his concert platform. To persuade females to come close and admire his plumes, he sings the most complex song he can manage. And he does that by copying the songs of all the other birds he hears around him, such as the kookaburra. It's a very convincing impersonation. Even the original is fooled. Because they laugh together, they laugh together at sunset. That's all they have he can imitate the calls of at least 20 different species. He also, in his attempt to outsing his rivals, incorporates other sounds that he hears in the forest. That was a camera shutter. And again. And now a camera with a motor drive. And that's a car alarm. And now the sounds of foresters and their chainsaws working nearby. They really are good imitators, yeah, and they really are. Yeah, you can get very confused. Very, uh, uh, that seems really annoying. No, you come over the hill and there's a... And you, they always heard car alarms, so they always thought they only talked about car alarms. Oh, that's so annoying. Yeah, they have a crazy larynx structure. They're really fantastic. You, look, you should look it up. The, su the superb, the superb liar bird. It's on one of the coins in Australia. Actually. Cool. Yeah, because it's actually they're liars, right? But it's not. It's a liar with a liari. It's the it's the musical instrument, right? The, their tails are beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I we talked about the Mona Lisa, got stolen, um, parodies, very small, but and these attributes of it that. This is the piece that's, that really is annoying. I told you about this just now, boom, 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 all these things. Um, so that's the first mistake, is, is thinking that it comes from, spreading comes from a single source, right? It's this match story. Um, <coughs> gamers might like that one. Uh, you know, the second one is, okay, you realize it's not about the source, but um, okay, so it's about people sharing things with each other and reinforcing it out in the wild. So let's go and mess with those. And these guys are trying so hard to control social. You know, they really, really are trying so hard. 
to find ways to hop into the into your social interactions and to say, you should tell him. And it's you know of course Facebook you know as a human and there are various kind of fun videos about that one, right? Where a Facebook-like entity walks around and knocks on doors and just does what Facebook does. It's basically a sociopath, you know. So, which is the great irony of it. You know, it's a sociopathic institution built on social trust, which it, which is seeking to erode essentially, right? So it sort of it lives off this mine of social trust, which it's constantly you know it's eating it up. My my point of view. Yeah, can't help itself, so is that which is like fashion, right? I, I yeah, so like I don't know, and, and I think it's an interesting question, and it leads to the research that people who feel like that they demonstrated or sharing on the internet, or did you just like sort of make yourself into the way before? Oh, it's been there forever. Oh, it's been there forever. I mean, you know, I mean, my argument is humans basically live on stories, right? So they're always sharing. I mean, the advent of language, I mean, was, was we, we shared that with ourselves all over the place. The alphabet was contagious. That's a quick line, right? I mean, yeah, we are, you know, using tools, copying and so on, right? I mean, octopuses do it, which is fun, right? I mean, there are all these kinds of experiments which where we surprise ourselves by finding out that animals copy each other in certain ways, you know, of their own volition. Right? Very fun octopus one was uh, two octopuses in a tank. They tend to eat each other. They're not very social, but they're good learning things. So one figures out how to open some puzzle to get at the unfortunate clam inside or whatever it was, right? And it's, it's comp and they had to do something that was, they had to like fish something out of something literally in some way. Okay, so they had to solve some puzzle. And the other one's just watching, and then they put it, the puzzle in there, and they just solve, they just do it straight away, right? I mean, I mean, it's just built into, I mean, it's just a massive, um, advantage in, for species to have that ability to share and not just run on instinct, right? I mean, it can go horribly wrong, obviously, right? Yeah. But, uh, but it's very powerful. All right, so once you see you're out there, you have this kind of, we, we realize it's this kind of story. Um, and this is how things, well, here's a, here's, here's a statement of how spreading works, right? Super spreading. So it's lots of average people who are trusting each other, connected to each other, who are for whatever reason, about this entity or thing that's being spread, they, they, they enjoy receiving it and they want to spread it, right? I had the example of BuzzFeed that they, you know, there are jokes and goofy things. They're the things that spread very easily. They're very lightweight. They're very easy to share. I mean, it's made it easier to have the web, obviously, because you can share photos, you can share, I mean, all these things we can just pass very easily. They, especially something like a photo, um, it doesn't get adulterated. If it's messages, then they, they, cha they can change a little bit. But, all right, so we had this. I know, right? Everything. These are the things that spread. Yeah. Um, and then this is an article that appeared in The Atlantic recently, so, uh, which, go, which basically is saying a lot of what I'm saying here, right? So that, uh, these, this, is, this is some sort of absurd thing. The dark, dark social. The, so these are links that happen online, connections that people make, where it's not being tracked. I guess you should be <laughs> amazed by how much is being tracked by, um, uh, you, know, official, you know, by online things. It's pretty bad. Uh, so my version of it is really that this is the real dark social, is this. And, you know, measurable web stuff is pretty small, right? Dark social, like dark is like Un unmeasured. <laughs> unmeasured. Sorry. Yeah, not evil, just it's like dark matter. So arguably evil. Yeah, that's a secondary piece to it. <laughs> but it's... But this is just, you know, we're sharing, like you tell someone about the, you know, the chocolate you ate the other day or whatever, or, you know, or this thing is funny or whatever, in, as a human to another human, you know. Yeah, yeah, which upsets some of these large, large institutions because they would like to, I mean, everyone from, you know, Facebook to the NSA wants to, wants to quantify those things so they can empower themselves. This is my claim. What's that? Google's not very good with the this, this social thing. So here's my little ridiculous, hard to see in this, but anyway. Um, share worthy content is king, right? So you're trying to share this square, right? 
and this is this is what you want. You get all these people to start talking about it. That's good. Oh, why did that not work very well? Oh, you're right. It's not the right one. No, it's okay. There's, um, Damn it. I'm going to find it. All right. I'm sorry. Huh. I guess I uploaded the wrong bit. Hmm. Maybe it didn't upload all. all. <laughs> Can you find it, Morgan? Oh, it's only 90 seconds. Ugh. All right, one second, let's see if we can get it. Yeah. Wow, okay. Um, that is not working. <coughs> Spreading, oh, I see. Come on. Okay, all right. Something wrong with the other one. So this is um, this is what you want, right? People spreading like this. You want that. So you advertise, you talk about it, you're excited about it, um, and then you get too excited and you don't do this, where you don't put your square into the connections. That's the idea. Uh, and if the thing doesn't spread, then you, you you change the thing, you keep working on it, and then they start spreading it. But this is so the story is, you know, this is what you want. So you start to Try to spread it. This is fine. Advertising is fine. You just tell people about it. Um, you don't mess with the personal interactions because this is eroding social trust. Eventually, it's bad for everyone. It's very tempting to do it. And of course, we'll keep trying to do it in bad ways. Uh, and then this little thing was just, you know, you just keep trying again and again and again. Right? And you modify what you have as you need to. All right. So I'll fix that up. Um, but that's. So that's some sort of, you know, overall story then for all of these things, spreading and success and, um, you know, huge features of, of social systems, which are incredibly important, right? I mean, it, and they will continue to be so more and more and more. I mean, there's no, there's no stopping that. Um, okay. All right, we have a few minutes left. I want to talk a little bit about scaling. I'll talk a little bit more about this when we come back after the break, and that will, that will be it. Um, and I have a sort of a summary thing for the whole course. Um, okay, so there's a lot of stuff in here that I can't get to. Uh, this is about uh, this kind of crazy scaling for biology, and um, maybe we can come back to that in complex networks. Might be a good plan to do that there. Um, okay, but I want to talk to you about Scaling. So we've done a lot of stuff on um, power law size distributions. This is different to that, right? So this is very true of many, many systems. And some of you are looking at it, in, for instance, in city, good, good realm. Uh, so there's some form of scaling in, in many, many kinds of systems. And it can be spatial, temporal. Um, and there are a few things here. I'm going to give you some definitions, uh, how, to, how to measure things. We won't talk about this, obviously. We're, uh, but it's basically a CSI investigation. Bonk, bonk. Um, that's the other one. <coughs> I did spend some hours trying to get bonk, bonk to come into my um, slides. Anyway, probably get arrested by YouTube. So it's unsolved. It's a theory aside. Who killed my theory? OK. So uh, power law relationships, as you've seen them over and over, usually, though, we've talked about probabilities and some thing decaying. But more generally, just these guys, right? Oh, that's good. Yeah. Eat some more of those. Yeah. They're not, they should not leave the room, right? <laughs> <coughs> What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. The results probably shouldn't be as intense, but let's, let's, let's at least believe that's the case, right? Um, so the same scaling exponent we have, blah, 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 we have a prefactor. You've seen these sorts of things. So um, basic thing, it's, it's a bit, the C, C will have dimensions in it sometimes. You have to be mindful of that. Right, so if this is length and volume to a fourth, which may be how 
tree scale, for example, um, maybe. Um, so you'd have to think about the dimensions. That's a little piece there. Um, they're linear in log log space, just as you know, right? So log, take the log of all these guys and we're good. Some base, we like base 10 because we're good people, right? Correct? It's easy for your engineers because you that's what you talk about all the time. But uh, yeah, no, none of the math stuff. The natural log, very bad. So this is a good thing to talk about in the last five minutes. Um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful example of, of scaling because there's a lot of bad examples of scaling. We've talked about that with these power law size distributions. But this one is pretty spectacular. So it's a PNAS article from, I think, 2000. And 2000. Um, uh, Terry Sinoski spoke here. Um, I'm probably mispronouncing his name. Uh, part of the Complex Systems Center. We had him speak a couple of years ago. Uh, he's a very famous guy, um, uh, but you know, lots of computer science, neuroscience stuff. So this is a this is a, a really interesting piece. So this is obviously a lot of bad, bad things happen to individual specimens, but each one of these is, uh, I believe, an individual. They're not averages. So uh, someone has got hold of the brain of these particular organisms and then measured, teased out the white stuff and the gray stuff, right? And the white stuff is is kind of like the the, the, the connection. The, the uh, cabling, right? The series of tubes part, OK. Uh, and the gray stuff is the computational units, right? So we think of our, we, have, we love our computer analogy for our brain now. And it used to be steam or something, I guess, in the 1800s, right? And, right? It used to be a sort of a complicated papyrus script when we were <laughs> <laughs> thousands of years ago. What have we had? That's a good, I mean, I, you know, we can't help ourselves but think of the computational part. Um, well, and there's also that there's another person inside you, the homunculus approach to it, which that's such good thinking. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> we are silly. So the computing pieces and the white pieces, the wiring. All right, and so this is a plot, log log, uh, because we expect power laws, uh, of gray matter here and white matter here. And the scaling is, it's a little sneaky, but it's down here, it's 1.23. So um, white matter is increasing super linearly as a the, the mass of that volume let's say volume is increasing as a power of 1.23 of the volume of gray matter right so more computational units bigger things have more computational units but there's more there's a, a super linear increase in wiring so it's interesting you know, why is that right? so that's something we can try to figure out uh it's hard you can see this of course on the actual slides the pygmy shrew is down here these guys are pretty small. Um, this is down 10, 10 grams of, um, no, this is a volume in millimeters cubed. These guys only weigh a few few grams, actually. Like the smallest mammals are four or five grams, I think. It's a really little guy. Uh, we have an elephant up here. Humans don't get, they're not special. We're not special in this, at least in this thing, right? Brain size is a function of rest of your size, yes, but not, in terms of this architecture of the brain, we don't have anything else going on there, at least you know this through this particular lens. Uh, we are on the same same line here, right? We got everything: fox, the eye, eye, flying fox, um, the long-eared desert hedgehog donated itself to science here. Um, they are very. Yeah, oh, there's more than one hedgehog. You just have them in the lab, right? They're very cute. Next to the lemurs. All right, so lots of fun animals in here. The owl monkey went uh, went west. The gibbons, baboons, squirrel porpoises, monkey. squirrel monkey. Uh, it's a sloth, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Have I got that wrong? Let's look it up. No, 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 no. I'm, I, I think I'm wrong about it. An AI, an AI is a sloth. That's a good Scrabble word. Yes. <laughs> No, it's a lemur. Sorry, AI AI by itself is a is a is a sloth. No, this is a this is a lemur. <coughs> there you go. Eating bananas, good good job. Uh, but it's um. So an AI was involved. All right, so <coughs> let's see. Why would this be? So more wiring. Okay, so here's a little calculation, and we'll do this very quickly, and that will be a good thing about scaling. Um, and I wish I could talk to you more about these things, but this is, this is pretty good. 
All right, so we have these volumes, G and W, we'll call them. There's a cortical thickness, right? And then a cortical surface area, right? So you have your nice wrinkly brain. Everyone has nice wrinkly brains. And, but there's some thickness in the, in the cortex. Um, there's the average length of these white little fibers, that are the, these axons that are joining um, the computational units. And then there's a density of them. Okay, so you've got some, some wiring like this, right? This one thinks about celebrities, and this, yeah, okay, whatever it is. Um, <coughs> you know, computational power devoted to, you know, like sports, and you know. um, it's distributed, of course. Okay, so uh, let's, so some rough, here is the rough argument laid out in, in that um, article. So, um, volume of gray matter proportional to surface area times the thickness. So this is uh, roughly, you can argue with this one, there's a volume, surface area, and then a, a, a depth. Um, and then the white matter, you're going to have this kind of thing. So again, you have surface area, and then you have the typical length of these guys. right? So that's good. And then you need the density of them. So the P times uh, S will give you the, the number that you need here, essentially, to multiply those Ls. And you've counted everything twice. So you put a half in there. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, this is a bit of a funny one, but basically, fair enough. All right, so if this is the, if there's a typical scale here of L, right? And now we've got our little brains over here, our tiny brain. There's our shrew. Um, <coughs> uh, if we uh, mess around with this a little bit, we've got these three equations. We can get rid of uh, S and L. We can get rid of those ones, and we can get a relationship between G and W, right? So if G is a function of L, G is a function of S and T, and W is a function of S and L, and this is some universal thing P. So we should be able to mess around with that. Um, <coughs> T is going to be sitting there. So this is a bit a little kooky. All right. There's not enough time. So I'll just tell you the thing. So we get to this. You actually get to, if you eliminate those things, you get width. You've gotten rid of S and T, S and L. You end up with the um, cortical thickness still here. So this is light matter volume growing as gray matter volume to the four thirds. So 1.333. Repeating, of course. <coughs> no? Um, Leroy Jenkins? Okay, Leroy Jenkins, good. All right. So um, uh, T is the cortical thickness. So that's sitting there. So to bring this back to uh, 1.23, some scaling might be sitting in there. And this is then an observational thing. This is not really argued. There's an observation of another kind of scaling, which needs to be explained itself, that the thickness of the cortex scales as organism go size goes up very, very, very weakly. It gets a little bit thicker as the brain gets bigger. Um, so there's more computational units. Uh, so <coughs> this is roughly true. Yeah, if you think about this, then the surface area is growing as gray matter volume to 0.29. If you're Einstein, it's growing like 1.3. You're kind of on a different thing. Very wrinkly brain, um, supposedly. Uh, okay, so you clean that up and you get your 1.23. So it's a little bit of a just so magical explanation. Uh, but the main thing here, and there's some more pieces to it, but let's finish with this. The main thing here is it's a beautiful, beautiful, I think I said, yeah, heartwarming example. And this is what you want in when you're looking for scaling. So I'll give you a lot of other examples here. Um, you're done? Too many? <laughs> okay. So guys, have a good Thanksgiving. Empty your brains, fill your stomach. <laughs> 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 and we'll see you one, two more times. <laughs>